Washington. The Second Great Awakening was a time in American history when religion was growing out to the frontier. Preachers preached to crowds of t more than 25,000 UK meetings. In these meetings, people often got religion. This caused people to start rolling, barking, dancing, and even twitching. The preachers often targeted the young women with families. Women were usually the most prominent of church members and often joined with their families. These meetings gave way to new frontier religions, like the Baptist and Methodist churches. These frontier churches were known as more rowdy and even had a song that went like, The devil hates the Methodists because they can sing and shout the best! I am a missionary, and in my free time, I like to read American literature and history. One of my favorite poets is Henry Longfellow. He wrote one of my favorite poems, The Evangelion. Also, I like John Whittier, because through his poems, he has made many people abolitionists. America even has really good women writers. Louisa Alcott and Emily Dickinson are two of my favorite women writers. America also has my favorite foreign writer, Edgar Allan Poe. His story, The Raven, gives me goosebumps every time I read it. Then there's the writer of my favorite book of all time, Henry Melville. His book, Moby Dick, shows extremely well the struggle between good and evil. Not only do I read stories, I also read history all the time. George Bancroft, the father of American history, has taught me through his sixth volume set so much about America. Another historian, William H. Prescott, through his writings, has explained to me the American conquest of Mexico and Peru. However, I have read that the South doesn't like that the history of America is being written by New Englanders. They believe they're miswriting history. Okay, I gotta get back to work. Bye. Hello, my name is Ralph Waldo Emerson, and I am the most well-known transcendentalist from Boston, Massachusetts. I believe that truth transcends the senses, and that truth cannot be found just by observation alone. I know that everyone has an inner light that can illuminate the highest truth and put them in direct contact with God. I lived during the golden age of American literature in the 1830s, and I believe that self-reliance and self-discipline breeds hostility to authority. I am also a very influential philosopher and I tell my audiences that self-reliance, self-discipline, self-importance, self-confidence, optimism, and freedom are essential for life. Some of my fellow transcendentalists are Henry David Thoreau and Walt Whitman. Mr. Thoreau condemns governments that support slavery, and he also wrote Walden in 1854. Mr. Whitman is quite an emotional poet, but he also wrote The Leaves of Grass, about the enthusiasm of expanding America, which eventually brought him fame. Hey, my name is Leo. I'm going to talk about Joseph Smith and uh, Mormonism. So Joseph Smith was born in 1805. Um, he claimed to be visited by angels uh, and later wrote a book, the Book of Mormon. He attracted a large following, but there's so many that opposed him. Uh, for example, neighboring states, such as Ohio, Missouri, and Illinois, did not approve um, of his religion. When he died, he was succeeded by Brigham Young in 1844 when he moved to Utah. Uh, many followed him, and Utah grew remarkably. By, nine, or by 1848, around 5,000 settlers um, had moved to Utah, and eventually a federal army was dispatched to stop Brigham Young as he had became the territorial leader of Utah. During this time, tax-supported primary schools were very rare. Americans began to realize the importance of school. People were worried that uneducated people would be able to vote. The first schools uh, were called famed little red schoolhouses. They were one room, one stove, one teacher, and had eight grades. They were also typically only open a few months a year. Teachers were not educated enough and paid, uh, paid enough to effectively teach. Horace Mann was a brilliant and idealistic graduate of Brown University. He campaigned for better education However, it was still an expensive luxury. In 1860, there were only 100 secondary schools and about a million adult illiterates. Noah Webster wrote textbooks that helped improve education.
Compared to women in Europe in the 19th century, women in America had more rights. But American women still were not able to own property or vote. At the time, every single white male over the age of 21, regardless of intellect, could vote. Some brave women took action and organized people to protest for change. One of these brave women is Elizabeth Cady Stanton, who is considered to be the first advocate for female suffrage. Another famous feminist is Susan B. Anthony, a skilled speaker whose followers called themselves the Susie Bs. In 1848, many feminists gather in Seneca Falls, New York for the Women's Rights Convention. At the convention, Elizabeth Cady Stanton reads a Declaration of Sentiments modeled after the Declaration of Independence, declaring rights for both women and men. Many of the women involved in this movement were also involved in the movements for abolition and temperance. In the early 19th century, the country was facing a huge drinking problem. To combat this, the American Temperance Society forms in Boston in 1826. Some reformers wanted temperance, while others wanted legislation to ban alcohol completely. This idea was known as teetotalism. Neil S. Dow, the father of prohibition, helped pass the main law of 1851, which prohibited the sale and production of intoxicating liquor. The law was repealed in 1856. As a result of the temperance movement, the nation cut back on hard liquor consumption. Hello, my name is Griffin Hollingsworth, and my first topic was on wilderness utopias. Reformers set up more than 40 communities of communitarian nature lovers, which sought for human and betterment. The first one was founded by Robert Owen in New Harmony in 1825 in present-day Indiana. Rook Farm in Massachusetts was founded by a brotherly sister corporation in 1841. This was committed to the philosophy of transcendentalism. The Anita community in New York area was focused on free love, birth control, and the eugenic selection of parents to produce favorable offspring. Finally, the Shakers, a community experiment founded by Mother Ann Lee, prohibited marriage and sexual relations. During the dawn of the scientific achievement, Americans were best known for borrowing and adapting the findings of Europeans. Medicine was still primitive by modern standards, and bleeding was a common cure to many diseases. That's nasty. Smallpox plagues were dreaded, and the yellow fever outbreak of 1793 took several thousand lives. Life expectancy was only 40 years, and rotten teeth were some of the worst problems someone could have. Tooth extractions were usually performed by the village blacksmith. Homemade remedies included to rubbing toads on tumors, and taking cold baths. Toad! Tumor! Early forms of anesthetics was that the patient drank whiskey and was tied down. Laughing gas was not successfully used until the 1840s. Hi, my name is Emma Willard, and I'm here to discuss higher education in the early 1800s. After the Second Enlightenment movement, more and more colleges and higher level institutions were established. Let's go check one out. However, even with this movement, women's education and opportunities were not a given. So along with other feminists during this time, I chose to fight for this and I opened the Troy Female Seminary, the first women's higher education institution in the United States. Let's go take a trip to see it. Welcome to the Troy Female Seminary, the higher education college I created in 1814. From here, women's education has grown and blossomed into what it has become today. Welcome back! In addition for the general public, license lectures, as pictured here, provided a new and unique opportunity for speakers in areas such as science, politics, literature, and philosophy. This was important because it educated the masses and spread the importance of knowledge to people that it wouldn't normally influence who didn't go to college or a higher level education institution. Lastly, another influential magazine written was Gaudi's Ladybook, a magazine intended to entertain, inform, and educate the women of America. This magazine was 
primarily marketed and purchased by women. However, you might find it interesting to know that apparently it's the Torrey Pines varsity football team's favorite book to read during water breaks at practice. Now, it's time for the mystery document part of the show, sponsored by Capri Sun. Now, mystery document today is a quote. It says, Behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which thing was abominable before me, Satan the Lord. Now, I'm going to guess that this quote, because of David and Solomon having many wives, is from the Book of Mormon, because Mormons practice polygamy. As the Republic grew, reform campaigns of all types followed. Spiritual reform was one of the five main movements that occurred. This was led by mostly middle-class descendants of pioneer farmers who were inspired by the Second Great Awakening. They dreamed a newer vision of what society should be, a world free from cruelty of war, intoxicating drinks, discrimination, and ultimately slavery. Women's reform was the second of the main movements that occurred. It occurred during this time especially because these reform crusades provided women with a unique opportunity to leave their duties at home to break into the public affairs of society. Criminals and their punishments even saw reform during this time. State legislators slowly abolished debtors' prisons, criminal codes were softened, and brutal punishments slowly eliminated. But the biggest reform they saw was the idea that jails should not only serve to punish prisoners, but they should also try to reform them. Mental health and social reform also saw a lot of change during this time period. Sufferers of so-called insanity were treated cruelly and only as beasts. Dorothea Dix traveled and collected first-hand observations on insanity and asylums to try to change this. Her petition of 1843 to the Massachusetts legislature resulted in improved conditions and the more appropriate con concept of mentally ill. They were not monsters as prior knowledge and discrimination had led many to believe and treat them as. Hi, I'm Washington Irving the first American to receive international recognition as an author. Before the mid-1800s, most literature was imported from Britain, and American literature grew in success after the War of 1812 because of the surge of nationalism that followed it, and Romanticism arrived in America, which also boosted the literature in the country, which, and that was a movement that originated in Europe that increased arts and literature in the late 1800s. And as national literature progressed, authors like me, such as James Fenimore Cooper, became the first novelist to be known worldwide.